Catherine Hayho, thanks for joining me today. I want to begin by going over what the latest numbers and data are saying about the state of climate change and about uh, what's going on. Mm -hmm. Well, I am a climate scientist, and when we look at the data, when we look at the state of the world, that's not where I find hope. It seems as if almost every new study that comes out these days is showing that things are changing faster or to a greater extent than we thought before. We are conducting an unprecedented experiment with our planet, and while we certainly have some educated guesses as to what's going to happen, our latest guesses are that we're possibly under rather than overestimating the projected change. And so many of the countries in the G7 have taken on uh, ambitious goals to reduce their emissions. Uh, many of them are not meeting the targets they've set yet, including uh, Canada. So given the fact that you've just said that perhaps the numbers are even more daunting uh, than we thought even, even a couple of years ago, uh, what do you think uh, G7 leaders need to be looking at as they gather in Quebec? Mm -hmm. We need to reduce our carbon emissions. And how we're going to be doing that is by recognizing both the challenge that confronts us, as well as the many points of hope there already are right here in Canada, as well as around the world. We often feel like climate change is this giant boulder that we have to push up the hill, and nobody else is trying to push it up the hill. Whereas the reality is the boulder is already starting to roll down the hill. It just isn't rolling fast enough, and that's why we need more hands on board. And a big part of your work in the United States is trying to communicate plainly uh, what climate change is, but especially what the impact is on everyone uh, from farmers to people living in coastal areas. Uh, what is the biggest challenge that remains for you as you're going about this work? We often feel as if climate should be a little bit higher on our priority list. Surveys that they've done across the states have asked people, do you think climate is changing? Most people would say yes. Do you think humans are responsible? The majority would still say yes. And then they say, do you think climate change will affect you personally? And almost everyone says no. Our problem is, is that we don't see this as a priority because we don't understand how climate change interacts with and affects everything that's already at the top of our priority lists. It affects the health of our families and our kids. It affects our communities. It affects the economy, our use of natural resources, refugee crises, international security. It affects everything that's already at the top of our lists, and that's why we care. Now, the G7 Summit is going to take a look specifically at the world's oceans and uh, not just climate change, but also plastics and, and other issues. Uh, but on the role of climate change and oceans, what do you think needs to be discussed uh, at this summit? Mm -hmm. Well, when we talk about climate change, one of the main indicators or metrics we use is global average temperature. But when we look at all the extra heat being trapped inside the climate system by our emissions, 93% of that heat is going into the ocean. And over 25% of our carbon is going into the ocean too. So the, re the only reason I think we don't talk about the ocean more is simply because we aren't dolphins. If we lived in the ocean, we would be all over this because the changes we are seeing there are phenomenal. And they are being exacerbated by runoff, by pollution, by incredible plastic contamination of the ocean. The oceans really are the base of our food chain and ensuring their continued not just survival but health is essential to our own. And finally, I want to ask you, you're based in Texas in the United States, uh, although you're Canadian, but you, uh, so you've seen in the last year and a half that uh, the Trump administration has taken a decidedly different view on climate change issues as the Obama administration at last year's G7 summit. In fact, their final statement had no consensus uh, on climate change at all, and that was followed by uh, the U.S. withdrawing from the Paris uh, Agreement. Uh, does the world need American leadership on this file to make significant progress in reducing emissions? Mm -hmm. At the federal level, the U.S. position on climate is being controlled by the denial industry. But below the federal level, incredible things are happening. There's this movement called We Are Still In that includes states, cities, businesses, universities, even tribes, and they represent almost 40% of U.S. emissions. And because they are committing individually to the Paris Agreement, I think there's a lot more chance that they'll actually meet their targets because they're doing it at a level that they can make decisions. Now, the U.S. technically cannot withdraw from the Paris Agreement until one day after the next federal election. 
So I think there is still much to be written, and there is also much encouragement to be had when we look below the federal level in the U.S. today. Okay, well, we'll see what happens at the G7 Summit, and we'll continue to follow the debate over climate change and the environment. Catherine Hayhoe, thanks so much for taking the time today. Great chatting with you.